All right, guys. So now we're gonna go do the installation of the brand new ball joint. Now let me be clear and honest here. The process for installation takes longer, because as you saw on the on the uh, removal, you could use the impact to take off the nuts super quick, but putting them back on is a different process. You you can use impact on some parts, but not all of them. Not all of them. So we're gonna go into that. Let me just give you a recap. So took off everything that has to do with the knuckle assembly, as you can see it's right there. The rotor, the uh, back in play for the brakes, and obviously <coughs> the really messed up ball joint. So now, again, we're going to go to the installation, and there are tools that we still have not used that we're going to be using for the installation, like the grease gun, the grease, all these right here, torque wrenches. So there's still a lot of process to be done. So here we go. Let's get going. <clears throat> and the very first thing we're going to do is to put a little bit of grease right here. So, as I had mentioned before, here we go, STP grease. Going to uh, just put a little bit, I mean, no need to go crazy, just, just enough to locate the entrance of this right here. As you can see, I'm going very light on the amount of grease that I'm putting on here and that's it that's it that's all you gotta use so let's get the uh board on. all right so we need to be using this big guy and Obviously, here's the uh, new ball joint, brand new. And we're going to be using these two adapters for the uh, ball joint presser. So, the way we're going to do this, since the uh, ball joint is going to go like this. So, <clears throat> we're going to use this one, the short one. It's going to be right up here. And then we use this one to go like this. All right, we're gonna make sure that this stud is actually sticking out through here. Okay. It's that simple. Um, since we're going to be pressing this in and this is going to be on top um, it's better if you just remove this little boot take it off we're not even going to use it anyways because uh, we are going to put some grease in here all right What we need to obviously pay attention to is 
when we are putting the, uh, the ball joint in place, make sure that it is completely straight. You don't want that ball joint to go in there sideways. Okay. That'll mess up the uh, the whole idea that we're trying to, to accomplish here. tight with your hands okay as tight as you can with a hand all right then this is when I'm gonna need to bring you guys a little higher so you can see everything that's gonna be going on all right so we're gonna need uh, our big boy and uh, no, it's 22. That one is the 22. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna use the big impact. I'm gonna screw this whole thing down to the point where it just doesn't go in anymore. Okay. I mean, this doesn't go down anymore. Which it'll be according to to what I see here. It should be about five threads down. So let's see. Let's see how we do it. Just hold on to this while you're tightening down. Felt like it moved out of place. I don't know. I don't think it did. Now, that's tight. Take it off. Easy as that. Okay, it's all pressed in. You can check with your fingers on the back side over here, and it's all nice, nice and ready to go. Now we're gonna go with the snap ring that goes around it, and we put these uh, parts over here. As you can see, it comes with a, a new nut the uh, grease connection snap ring and these um, locking things they're just uh, in my opinion a bad design I don't use them um, I hate these bags because they, they make me so thick you cannot tear it through them So, so the okay then. So as I was gonna say, these right here are just uh, not a good design. I mean, I really don't understand how these go because I try to put them in whatever angle, and it just tends to come off easy. So, not gonna use them. No, thank you. I already use the traditional uh, Carter pin that everybody knows about. That's uh, probably the best, uh, the best thing that we can do. Put that there. Okay. Then you got these. 
I'm gonna just put it right here. And then um, you can put them in. I mean, some guys say you, it, you should put the soft side or, I mean, it really don't matter. There's no real soft or hard side of these. So, shh, whatever. And there we are. It's that easy. You can tap it to make sure. But it's it's in place. So that's done. Now let's go put the grease fitting in. And uh this is where we might have a little bit of trouble. Uh, my actual current grease gun is giving me trouble. Let me get a 10 millimeter. We're gonna just snug it up. No need to no need to go crazy with the uh, with the tightening on this like that. I mean, the grease is not gonna come out. And yes, you're probably saying, why are you letting it face like this towards the uh, break water? Well, uh, to be honest. It's difficult to have this facing out this way. I would have had to put this in um, this uh, thing before, but I didn't do it that way. <sighs> and I don't care. I mean, I don't mind. It's my vehicle. If it probably was somebody else's vehicle, I probably would have done it differently, but it's mine. Now I'm not going to be re-greasing this thing every single time I put it in the air, you know. I mean, you shouldn't have to. If you if you have to re-grease the ball joint constantly, then you have, that, that means you have a bad ball joint, honestly. It's leaking out. So I'll replace it. I mean, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's go use the grease gun on this thing and fill it up a little bit. The reason why I was saying I might have some trouble with that grease gun is that um, the, the part where it connects to the, the little nozzle that connects to this right here is probably so worn out. I mean, it's, it's old. It's like seven, maybe eight years old. And uh, that is, you know, it puts the grease inside but then not all of it goes in and some of it just comes out and I'm like shoot you know and you're trying to, to, to do a job right well makes you have to work more to get it done so sadly that's the problem let me go get a paper towel And this is probably the most tedious part right now since I have to replace the uh, the nozzle this this part I need to replace it because everything else is working fine it's working perfect so it's just that little thing let's see if it helps I mean if it works but I definitely will be replacing it It grabs on, but the grease comes out everywhere around it. Let's go back to the 
as it is doing right now. I'm pricing on the uh, on the grease gun, and it's uh, pushing some of the grease on the sides. And I know for sure that the grease inside the ball joint is not all the way full. It's not all the way to the top. And uh, for sure, you know, it's not because it's full. It's just this thing is it's probably already good right there. That's it is. I think it, I think it worked this time, but for the other side, it wasn't working well. I think it's fine. Yeah. One way to check is by taking off the. insert here taking it off and checking you know how it how full it is you know that's what we're going to do right now and you could say it's still got some room it's not full to the top let me get a flashlight It looks like it's full. Yeah. I'll leave it like that. I'll lock it back up with Yeah. Okay. And then we put a little boot on it, but let me do this first. Let me at least wipe it clean. There. Then we put the boot on. And we're good. Alright. <clears throat> clean off the excess that is coming out of it. Alright. Alright. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, the next thing to do is to mount the hub assembly to this right here. And here's the big one. This is not a 27. It, I mean, it, it, when you grab a 27 millimeter, it feels like it wants to go in, but it doesn't go all the way in. So the correct size is actually a lot bigger. Okay, so that the, the size of this thing is actually one and uh, one and one sixteen, so it's actually pretty big. If you don't have, if you if you buy Mevel Tech Terrain Tough for your Explorer, uh, most likely you're gonna get this size of um, nut. And if you don't have this size, you're gonna have to go buy wherever wherever you can find it at. So now, let's grab the hub. Oh, uh, this guy's heavy. Um, 
the older the older Ford Explorers had this aluminum this one's steel so it's probably twice as heavy as the uh, the older Ford Explorer um, what I'm trying to say is the model 2002 through 2005 had the uh, aluminum knuckle this one's uh, different I actually decided to go steel sheesh this thing's heavy okay I'm gonna put the uh, knuckle in and then we're gonna have to lift up while we try to put the nut on the stud <clears throat> once we get a few threads in we can let go of the uh, knuckle I'm gonna try to put all the threads I can possibly put in before I let go of it and that's it okay yeah now now that we have that let's try to leave it there let's face upwards like that and let's get this guy to go in let's see if I'm able to push it down just enough like I did on the other side <clears throat> there I see that's probably not gonna hold but I'll get this tool get this uh, locking pliers make it as tight as you possibly can okay I'm doing that is that since this is completely already worn out you want to lock that stud in place so you can zip the nut all the way back to this house and we're gonna do that using I think that's a uh, 21 18 got six okay we use that 18 and zip it on um we do our best here hold it in place while we zip it up okay by this time you can already let go of it <sighs> You don't want to dam damage that any more than it already is. And now, what we're going to do is finish putting this up manually. Because, um, since the threads, I mean, since this thing is already, you know, wanting to spin around by itself, we got to hold it back from uh, spinning. So, the way that we do this is by grabbing a, a pass through socket with a pass through wrench. I'm going to show you what I mean. So, you need something like this, it's completely passed through. Okay, I'm going to put it like this, right? And then this one with an eight is an eight. Uh, no, it's a 10. Okay. 
So with a 10 millimeter, oh no, it wasn't eight. Just I didn't put it right. Okay, so you see the eight millimeter goes to the to the stud, while the 19 millimeter pass through is going to go to the nut. Okay, so. Like that and then as you can see the pass-through ratchet with the socket is not gonna go anywhere and all you do is hold you're gonna hold the uh, 8 millimeter to the uh, stud while you manually bring the nut back home Okay, when it gets tight, don't go crazy, just snug it, and there you go. We're going to do the same thing with the tie rod, and we're going to do the same thing with the lower ball joint. So, this one is already hand tying, it is not torqued to spec just yet. So, we're going to leave that there for now, I'm going to go back down to the lower ball joint okay <clears throat> all right so this for this one i'm gonna have to actually literally sit on the ground So, we're going to use a flathead screwdriver, as you can see, it's a flathead. You're going to use a, a 1 and 1 16 inch wrench. If you don't have one of these, I got this one at Home Depot. It's a Husky brand, so it's not going to be too expensive. Husky tools are not, are not crazy expensive. Okay. The crazy downside to uh, to this um, is that the okay the stud for the lower ball joint has to use a flathead, so you know, it's not the best style, but you know it works, I guess, and then. Uh, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go like that. Yeah, so use that and then put the um stud. Uh, here we go. Just hold the stud in place while you tying it with the wrench. Don't worry about the knuckle moving. Uh. All you have to worry about is that stud not turning. And there, I think that's tight enough. So now, I'm gonna leave that like it is for now. And we're just gonna focus now on the tie rod. So, let me do this. As you can see, the tie rod also has a hexagonal or hex bit at the end. That's where you're going to also do the same thing with the pass through. Okay. Pass through again, but 
I don't have, there is no 21 millimeter size for the pass through. That's why you're gonna need a wrench, 21 millimeter wrench. And I believe down is gonna be the 10 millimeter. Okay, so. There, 10 millimeter. And I'm gonna use the open end side to, uh, to this, this one. And that's tight. Something fell. Oh, this fell. Okay. So now this is on. Uh, hand tighten. This one's hand tighten, and the upper ball joint is tightened. Um. Yeah. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything else back together. And the last thing we're gonna do before putting the tire on will be tightening the lower bow joint down to specs and put that cutter pin in place. So now I'm gonna go get back up and uh, gonna put everything else like it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you guys over here. Okay. So we're going to be, we can put this one on right now. The, uh, ABS wire, put it in back in its home. Okay, make sure that wire gets uh, pinched in there. Okay, now let's do. Let's tighten that one down with the battery. Okay. Okay, so this one is gonna be. So when you're gonna tighten these down, make sure that you're using that symbol there. It'll actually stop when it actually is tight. So you're gonna see. You see that? Doesn't let me tighten anymore. That's what you gotta use um, for these. Because honestly, the torque spec, if you actually reach the torque spec with the impact, they're so light on the torque that you really don't need all that power to tighten it down. Now we're going to put the back in plate. <clears throat> put the top one first. And then put one of the uh, on the ones over here and everything else that you piece of cake. Then we're going to use a eight millimeter. Same thing. Okay. 
You see? That is not coming off. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna do one of the uh, heavy ones, which will be putting the, uh, the uh, caliper and bracket on. Before I do that, let me put the rotor on it. These rotors are massive. What I'm gonna do so this uh, rotor doesn't play around with me. I'm gonna put two of the uh, lug nuts, at least two of them. Okay, yeah. Now let's get at least one of the bolts and get that uh get this thing. Kidding me? Ah, uh, that's why. One of the other. one of the brake pads have gotten out of place. Okay, so let's put the top one. And I say put the top one in first because it's the one that you can easily see when you put it on. Okay. Now let's put the bottom one. Remember, these are 21 millimeters. What we're going to do is tighten them down with the impact. There it is. And we're not going to go too crazy. And later, we're going to torque them down to spec. Okay. And then do the same thing with the bottom one. Hold on. There we go. There. Okay. So, brakes are installed. Now, next and probably the last little bolt that we have to put on will be this one up here for ABS wire. Probably not able to see that yet. You're not. It's uh, right up here. Okay. Okay, and that goes with an eight millimeter. Just bend this down a little, and that's it. Okay, now all we got left to do is torque specs for all of this. Yeah, I don't remember all of them. But I know that the upper ball joint goes at 41. Yeah, upper ball joint goes at 41 foot pounds. So let's do that one right now since I already have it set up on my torque wrench. Forty one foot pounds. 
Okay. That one's done. And uh, yeah, forgot the other ones. <sighs> I got the uh, numbers on. I got the numbers on on my phone. I'm gonna need my phone for this. Okay, so I got the numbers for the other ones. The uh, bracket, the caliper bracket bolts, they go at 122 foot pounds. The, which we're probably just gonna do right now. Um, those are most likely a pain to do because the space is very limited, but we'll do it anyways. So 122 foot pounds for, for the caliper bracket, 111 foot pounds for the lower ball joints, and 76 foot pounds for the tie rod. The upper ball joint is 41 foot pounds. So bracket is a 21. Put it back here. This is gonna be fun because we're actually pulling on this side. Okay, it's 122 for the top one. Now let's do the bottom one. Two for the bracket. Now I'm gonna set this up for 111 for the lower ball joint, but I'm gonna do that one last. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do the tie rod at 76 foot pounds. I'm gonna set this up. Okay. And let's do the last one we got. It's the lower ball joint. Sixteen inch socket. Okay. There we go. All right, that's one eleven. Now, gonna get that cotter pin. You should always have, as a mechanic or not a mechanic, if you like to repair your stuff, get a, a kit of cotter pins. It'll come in handy. Trust me on that. It'll come in real handy. I've had. I've bought parts that are required to have a cutter pin 
and sometimes they don't bring a brand new carter pin and that's when you have to you know go into extra steps and either go back to the store and tell them hey you didn't give me a carter pin blah 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 I would have just have a kid and not even worried about it. And plus, it's dirt cheap. You're probably going to be looking at my face for a minute. I'm going to be putting this thing in here. And I'm going to turn it just a tiny bit more. Actually, quite a bit more. When you, whenever you try to get the uh, the cutter pin hole to be open, never ever loosen it. Always just keep on tightening until it shows up. <sighs> Just there, almost there, let me see. Oh, where did I put the carpet in? <sighs> where the heck? Oh, there it is. Uh, just a tiny, 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 tiny little bit more. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, man. It needs to move like one millimeter or half a millimeter. And there we are. Or not. <sighs> yeah, there we are. <sighs> Let me just uh, hit it a little bit. Okay. And then the best thing you can do is turn it so it could be underneath, not necessarily around. Use a needle nose plier. <clears throat> Turn it. It might require some muscle, but you can do it. Yeah, simple as that. Ugh. Now there's no way for it to actually come off. Okay. And that is how you get this thing done. <sighs>